Hey, everybody. Dr. Carmen Bryant, Car Chronicles. I know you guys are looking at me. She's got the same outfit on. I'm just making a few videos because while I'm on vacation, I'm not going to be able to make a lot of videos. I'll try, but I probably won't be able to. But let's get started. Let's talk about some things. You ready? Let's do it. What's the difference between a, um, a democracy and a dictatorship? It's funny because uh, my pastor just got through um, ministering and added that in, and she was talking about that, um, on Sunday. And, um, one of the things you have to understand a democracy, which is, um, United States of America is a democracy. I know you guys have your own political views. I know you got your argument. You know, I can't believe this. We trying to have a, I understand all that. Let's just take the, let's just take the analogy. Let's use this analogy. Okay. So a democracy is when people run the country, you know, the it, it is our voices, our votes, when we want to add policies or add laws, you know, we do petitions, you know, there's a lot of things that happen because the people are doing it. We're doing, we have a voice and we need to use our voice, right? Well, on the other hand, a dictator, a dictatorship is when a government is run by one person or a party, but let's just, let's use the person part. A dictatorship is when one person, they don't care about what you think, you know, like a democracy, they, you know, they care about what the people think, the health reform, the LBGTQ rights, you know, all this stuff. People care about, this is important to them. This is the kind of stuff that they're making changes. You watch changes when it comes to domestic violence laws, you know, uh, all sorts of things. You know, up here, we have the abusive litigation implemented, I think, last year where, you know, um, abusers cannot go in and abuse the abused in court because they want to, you know, so there are laws. That's democracy. You know, we, we have the voice to change things. In a dictatorship, once again, dictatorship is one person does not care about how you feel, what you think, your will, you know, your emotions, your empathy. So it sounds familiar, right? Well, anytime you get into a situation with a narcissist, do know you are entering into a dictatorship. That's what domestic violence is. It's a, a matter of power and control. That person wants to exert control on anyone that is in their circle, in their bubble. And that includes you as a parent, as you as a child, as you as a loved one, as a romantic partner. They want total control. They want dictatorship. They want supremacy. They want a seat in your heart. They want the throne. They want to be your God. They want to be the deity that you worship. They want to be that person that you bow your knee to and bow your will to. And you sacrifice to this narcissist. You sacrifice your time, your heart, your money. Some of you even sacrifice in, in ancient of days is called Moloch and Moloch they used to sacrifice children to Moloch you know and it was it that's that was their sacrificial offering was the children they sacrificed the children some of you guys have erected this narcissist and put this narcissist in a position where you've even sacrificed your children in all sorts of ways some of you have lost your children to the system because you could not let go of this narcissist you would not let go of this narcissist and it and it ended up with a CPS, Child Protective Services, came and took your children from you because you were not able to protect your children all because you were connected to this narcissist and you couldn't let go. That's the sad part. Watching young people, some of them don't understand what a narcissist is. And watching people, now I'm not talking about just the young people because you got older people, you got a little more mature people, you got people with grandkids, you got people with adopted children, you know, you and your own kids, you know, you may not be super young, you know, but the heartbreaking part about it is, is when you see, you know, it's hard when you are the person on the outside looking in. When the person is on the inside, it's hard to see any other perspective because that narcissist likes to isolate. Think about it. The narcissist likes to isolate because they know that if you get in contact with people like us and some of you out there, you know, if the, you stay around a voice of reason, if you stay around, see, everybody does not fall for the game of the narcissist. And the narcissist knows that. He knows who he can or she considers dangerous. Dangerous meaning that you have too much influence on my source of supply. You have too much influence. That's why you'll hear them use things. Now, I agree. Those of you that are married need to keep people out of your marriage. But at the same time, you also need to have a good mentor that you can have 
personal conversations. A man needs to have a good mentor where he can go and talk to this, a father, a father figure, a figure, an uncle, someone that, that is uh, concerned about the well-being and is not afraid to point out um, things that this person is doing wrong, that the husband is doing wrong, that the, the man is doing wrong. And you need a strong man in your life, you know, to be able to tell you the error of your ways too. It's not always her fault. Likewise, for a woman, you need a strong mentor that's not afraid of you, number one, and is not afraid to tell you where you're wrong. You're not constantly focused on the other person. You are also focused on you, you, and you need a good mentor that's able to. So I agree. You do need good mentorship and people that are wanting to see uh, you progress and do well in your relationship and even personally. But then you have the narcissist that takes that and, you know, you, you, you keep everybody else out of your relationship, keep your mom and daddy out unless they're mentors and, and they are unbiased, you know, they've had their own issues and they're not one to judge, but they will tell you what's wrong and what's right. Both of you, you know, but you keep the people out of your, out of your relationship. Friends have no business in your relationship unless they're able to be unbiased and girl, you know, you're wrong for that. Dude, bro, you know you're wrong for that. You know, so you 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 should be able to pick and choose. But you keep people out of your personal relationship. Everybody does not belong. It ain't you ain't married to you and them. You're not married to you them and and the entire family. Some of these mamas and daddies be all in your business. Yeah, I said it. I'm I was country with it. They're all in your business. Now, now that I've said all that, think about it for a minute. A narcissist will take that and pervert that, that very information. The information, you just got that information, right? A narcissist will take that information and implement it and pervert it to make it what they want and their agenda. And they'll tell you, keep people out of your relationship. And what they'll do is target the people that don't mind giving you good information. I don't think you need to stay with him. I don't think you need to be with her. You know, there are too many red flags and they're straightforward. There are too many red flags. Totally up to you. It is, you know, but I'm telling you now, you're going to have some regrets. I'm telling you now, it's going to get worse. If this right here don't change, if you get married to the person, it doesn't change, it's going to get worse. See, those are the type of people that the narcissist will try to get out of your life. They'll use exactly that. We need to keep people out of our life. We've had too many failed relationships. They'll take things that you have said. We have too many failed relationships and you already know how your mama is, how your daddy is. And, you know, even with the mentor, once that mentor says something that that narcissist doesn't like, all of a sudden the mentor becomes the bad person. The mentor becomes the enemy. And then why, you know, in the midst of you trying to de determine whether you're going to stay in a relationship or get out of the relationship, the problem is, is you involve people. They, they're hurt now. So they have taken upon the emotional pain that you have. Some of them are not empaths. Now, I know you think, Oh, no, that's an empath. No, that's most of us that that are close to people. You know, we hurt for you. You know, as a friend, as a family member, we hurt for you when we see you hurt. We hurt when we see what they're doing to you, and then we get frustrated when you we see you keep going back, keep going back, keep going back, and then we have to separate ourselves. Like, you know what? I love you. I really do. When you're ready, you let me know, but don't involve me anymore. I don't want to be involved in that. When you're ready, you'll know you're ready, and then you look for me. But don't keep looking for me because I'm telling you, and I'm trying to help you, but at the same time, every time you go back, guess what that narcissist does? They'll, you have helped them. That narcissist will take your help and separate you because now you're still angry, and they're not. And they're back together and you're the bad guy. And now that, that narcissist has something to say. So now they'll separate you too. And if you don't watch it, they'll separate all the reasonable voices, all the w voices of wisdom. They're going to separate. You become isolated. And then you wonder when you come out of these situations, many of you know you've come out of these situations. And the first thing you says, say is, I don't have any friends. I don't have any hobbies. I don't know anything about myself. I'm lost. You know, I don't even trust my own decision making skills. I don't even. Uh, and you ask a lot of questions. Is that right? Should I do that? You know, people don't want to. Most people are like, OK, what do you think? I don't know. I don't know what to think. I don't know if that's right or not. I don't even know if these people like me. I don't know if that's a good decision. I don't know. I don't know. The best thing to do is not to give them the answer. You have to let them go through this process of cycling through and making decisions. There's nothing wrong with making mistakes. People make mistakes. It's called trial and error. When you open up a business, when you have children, when you get a job, you know, but that narcissist has abused you so much that you don't even trust your own decision and they isolate you. 
It's called domestic violence. It's called power and control. You have entered into an agreement of dictatorship. You just don't know you did until you're in it. It's called a dictatorship, not a relationship. 